name's Lois Farsell. Um, played for Bradford Bulls, Leeds Rhinos Women, England Women. Um, recently just retired after probably about a 10 year playing career. Um, I work for Leeds Rhinos Foundation and as I've had to retire, I've um, gone into the more coaching side of um, women's rugby, both at um, academy level in the 16s and 19s and, and women's senior. For, for my playing career, it was always in, am I putting the right things in to get the right things out of, of my body? Um, so am I fueled for training, am I fueled for games, am I, am I fueled for my rest days and, and things like that? And that's probably the, the least definitely the last five or six years of, of playing as I got a little bit older and more mature. That's how I've seen it. Am I, am I prepared to do what I need to do? Um, and then I think as, as a coach, it's, it's pretty similar. Um, the girls need to be educated on what they're doing and the reasons why it's important for their nutrition to impact on their performance. In the run-ups to big tournaments with, with England, we, we did have um, workshops which were based around what, what you should be eating, when you should be eating, and particularly when you're on tour as well, how to deal with that, because I know it's it from my very, very, one of my very first tours for, um, to New Zealand. I remember seeing one of the players you know, hide a bit of uh, bacon or sausage that had been sold, not to have them for beans, um, and then to, to go into a more recent one is being actually, you know, not told not to do something and no reason why, but being told how to handle yourself whilst you're in the environments, because a lot of time it's hotels with all you can eat, yeah. healthy choices, but if you don't eat that much away and then you do it in a tournament, it's not great. Um, so I, I have very different stuff and quite different to what, what Scott said about the um, supplements and things like that. I think with, with women's sport, it's not a, that you need to do it, but these are options of doing it. And um, I don't think it's as big within women's rugby as what it is, or rugby league as what it is in the male side. And I was quite young and naive, so I, I, I probably stayed out of all the, the big conversations. As I got older, it was kind of taking more in. So, but I do, I do think it has changed a little bit now. I think people take a step back, particularly in the way that women's rugby is at the moment, is you know, we train a bit more, so you might train Tuesday, Thursday, play Sunday. However, the biggest thing is unlocking that potential while they're away from that. Um, so if you educate, you're more likely to get through and, and or provide options, you're more than likely to get some better answers. You're always going to struggle because where the women's game sits at the moment is it's played at the, the highest level, yet the players are still amateur. So, you know, it, it is tough because although they're playing women's Super League and it's, you know, broadcasting on Sky and having breakthroughs like that, the women are all still, um, you know, full time employed, maybe have family, children, um, busy schedules. So you, you do see that, but I think that the more it's getting there and the more it's getting bigger and the bigger the player pool gets, which is edging towards, um, then the, the players realise that ultimately it's their responsibility and if they want to do what they're doing, they need to be doing it all right. If not, there's no, there's no shortcut. So I think that that's improved as years have gone on and it'll certainly get a lot more um, noticeable within the next five years because there will be more people wanting to strive to play in those arenas. I think, I, I think, I wouldn't say it was really, really tough, but I think I noticed a difference when you got into good habits um, and it were always within your thought, so it's just like the preparation and time management, but once that you got into the habit of doing it, you kind of just were something that's rolled on week after week after week, um, and I think when you've all, you know, as, a, as an athlete, um, you're always going to have that, that challenge of, you know, when do you lay your hair down for a social occasion, when do you not, and things like that, and I think because the game is amateur, yet yeah, playing at a high, high standard, that's what you're always going to have, but... For me, I think it would just unlock in the fact that if you get into good habits and the more you do it, the easier it gets, then mm -hmm. that would be the best thing. It, yeah, body definitely. image. So the boys are probably more likely and men are probably more likely to buy, you know, to be, I want to do supplements, I want to do this, I want to do that, because it'll help get body comp that they believe they desire. Whereas women is, I don't want to do that or I'm worried about doing that because I don't want to get that body comp that people believe that I'm going to get to get to where I need to be. So the girls are very, and especially in the academy more so than the women's senior is, if I do that much lifting, if I do that much protein, if I do that much carbs, am I gonna either A, think that they're gonna turn into an absolute massive woman who's just got big overnight, I don't know I think that's gonna happen, or am I gonna put on weight? So it's balancing those, um, I won't say insecurities actually, I'd just say lack of knowledge, lack of lack, lack of knowledge, lack of education. I'd say, you know, the girls on your team who can lift the same and 
body comp might not change, but for some reason they think that if they do all the things that you probably want them to do as an athlete, which is not make sure they take supplements, make sure they're having the right protein uh, intake through the diet, lifting bigger to be a lot more robust and more strong in the games. Um, but sometimes they put that as a, a you know, you know they're not going to do it because they've, they've said that they're just not sure on it, so it's like education. We try to, to kind of use examples of, of players that they will be aware of or um, even in that sport, in different sports, um, but also just kind of educate and that's what we'll try to do a lot more of. We're, we're not as timed as what you'd like to be with the amount of time you see the players. That's a challenge for us as, as a coaching group, but just try and use examples of, look, this player has played for how many years and has, they, they do this, this, this in the gym, more than what you're doing, they eat the right things. Do they look like this image that you're, you're so scared of? And it's usually no. Um, so I think it's just educating them and breaking down their barriers and then showing them role models as well um, of people who that have done it and that hasn't happened to them. Not not particularly the wrong message, probably say good messages. I've, I spoke quite a bit a lot with Chris in 2017 about when you go on tour you get weird every single day and I'm, I, I don't really weigh myself very often um, and it's about understanding why your weight might fluctuate and the different reasons because if you know, we flew out and I might have flown out and weighed in and I was, I don't know, 65 and then you get there and you're 68 and you're thinking, oh my God, what have I done? Um, and those conversations about how to interpret that, of it could be, you know, from flying, it could be from water, it could be from, you know, a whole range of different things. So that was quite good for me because I think as long as I was feeling good and and those sort of things, but as a, as a coach, I don't think... I've got a lot to learn, but I don't think I'd comfortably be able to discuss with a, a female that if she was 68 kilograms, she needs to get down to 50 because I don't think that's the best way to do it. I think it should be more of a performance outcome. So if, it, you know, sometimes you know that a player might be overweight and that's not good, but I talk to them about, you know, currently you're playing eight minutes for us, you need to be able to play 28 rather than what they need to lose as a weight, weight wise. I think it's really tough and I think the toughest thing for people growing up now as athletes or as semi-professional athletes or just amateurs, there's so many messages out there which are the correct messages to have and I think that the way that I probably pitch it to anyone and the way that I kind of see it is, you know, anything can be bad for you the same as anything can be good for you as long as it's in the right proportions. Um, so I think for, for me as when it was about performance it were making sure I've got the right bits of everything and it's not to cut out fat, not to cut out carbs, not to do anything like that, just making sure that everything I had was balanced and that I was healthy because if you're healthy then you're going to be able to perform. I'd probably say keep it simple um, and also lead by example, so whatever you are saying maybe keep it simple, but don't go on about anything that you don't know, so for me as a, as a coach I'd, I'd rely on a nutritionist to be able to influence the influence the players because I think that what they say they'll listen to but then you've got to help them to try and put that forward but um, I think yeah keep it simple and, and make sure that you're leading leading by example in the most ways because they're probably going to learn off that as well.